my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you my July wrap up. So in July I actually had a really good reading month. I read 19 books and let me check my notes for my stats because I cannot remember them. Uh, 19 books, one of them I did not rate, one of them I gave two and a half stars, six of them I gave three stars, three of them I gave three and a half stars, two I gave four stars, two I gave 4.5 stars and four I gave five stars. So that was actually a pretty good reading month in terms of actual just numbers, like 19 is pretty good. Um, and I read some really, really good books um, and nothing fell below a 2.5 stars. So yeah, it was a really good reading month. I think that was mainly helped by the fact I took part in the reading rush, which I will not talk too much about, um, but I will just say here that I will not be taking part in the reading rush in the years going forward. Um, but I took part this year, I still posted my vlog, you can see it, I will link it, it'll be in the description and all that stuff. Um, but I will not be taking part in the future. So next July I'm going to have to find another reason to read seven books in one week. So the first book that I did not rate was Cutthroat Couts, um, which is a horrible history book and it is in this Horrible Histories blood curdling box of books. So I have now read five of these, um, five of 20 books and I'm reading, annotating them, and then I'm gonna take this box to Brittany for Christmas. Um, she knows that, it's no secret. Um, so yeah, I've read five of them, 15 more to go, and Cutthroat Cows was the one I had to get to um, next, because I'm doing them in time period order. Um, yeah, nothing to say about this. I know I'm not the intended audience, which is why I do not feel like rating them, um, especially because it's not that they're just middle grades, they are written for kids at school. Like there's little quizzes and um, it'll say, ask your teacher this, ask your teacher that. I don't have a history teacher and I'm not like 12 or under, but Horrible Histories, I love the TV show, so I wanted to read the books. I never read them as a kid. Um, so yeah, I read Cutthroat Cats this month. Then the two and a half star book I have actually already unhauled and that is The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturbe. So this I read with Emily over at Novel Novels, this was our buddy read for the month, and we both didn't enjoy it. I'm pretty sure we both gave it two and a half stars. It was fine. Um, this is based on the true story of Dieter Krauss, who was at Auschwitz um, in the Auschwitz-Birkenau family camp. Um, and it was really, really moving. Parts of the story made me tear up. The ending was amazing. Um, like the last 50 pages were a completely different book and I absolutely loved them, but that didn't make up for how bored I was for the rest of the story. Um, that's not me saying Auschwitz is boring. I have been to Auschwitz. I would love to go again um, as just like an older person and try and not try and appreciate it more, but I would appreciate it more because I went as like a 14 year old. Um, so I'd love to go again and see it all um, with a bit more of the knowledge I have now. The actual story wasn't boring. I believe it was the writing style that I didn't, didn't gel with. It was non-fiction added in with fiction and I think I needed either fully fiction or fully non-fiction. Um, I was a bit muddled with what was going on. I'm being very expressive with my hands today. I'm gonna try and stop. Okay, so the first three star book I read was actually a reread and I'm pretty disappointed to have put it down to three stars and that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. So this is the first book in this series and um, I got the next book, The Vanishing Stair, for my birthday in January and I really wanted to read it but I couldn't remember what happened in Truly Devious. So I thought I gave this book four stars overall. I actually gave it a very, uh, the first time round, sorry, um, but I actually gave it a very specific 3.75. Um, and I didn't really, I don't want to spoil it too much because I think for some people saying whether or not something's resolved at the end of a thriller is a spoiler. So let me just say that I don't even think this can be classed as a cliffhanger. I just think the book doesn't make sense. Um, and that really lowered my rating. It was four stars all the way through until the past, I don't know, 50 pages or so. And I was kind of angry because there's no way you can sit on just reading this book. You have to carry on. Um, so I wasn't too happy about that. Saying that, I will keep it. I did enjoy it. It's just that part of it, the fact that I don't like the ending. There's also mixed media in this, there is police interviews and stuff. I should probably explain what this is. This is about, um, what's her face, Stevie, who goes to Ellingham Academy, um, which is a very, very gifted school, and she is so into true crime and solving mysteries, and she decides she wants to solve the mystery of Ellingham Academy, where the founder's wife and child were um, kidnapped and potentially killed. 
So she wants to solve that. She decides to take that up on herself and it is that mystery mixed in with her school life. So really do like it. But in terms of actual rating on enjoyment, I, I can't give it more than three stars. The next three star book I read was the first book I read for The Reading Rush, which was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbotsky. And um, this again was a reread. I read this when I was about 16 and I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was the best thing. Um, but I think I may have slightly outgrown it. I went back and read it and a lot of the stuff I read, I would have thought at 16 was completely scandalous and couldn't believe it and so shocking. Um, but now oh, as like an older, I was gonna say an adult and I, I am an adult. As an adult, I didn't find it as, as like intense, I guess. Like at one point, um, some of the characters are doing, taking LSD. And as a 16 year old, I didn't know what LSD was. So that would have kind of been <laughs> a bit weird to me. And I, there were just a lot of things in this book that I would not have had the knowledge surrounding it at 16. So going back, um, it wasn't as shocking and mind breaking, but I did really enjoy it. It's still three stars. The next book I gave three stars to was Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen. My main problem with this book is it was pretty forgettable. So I actually just had to check on Goodreads what this was about and I read it in the reading rush week which was not that long ago wasn't it like last week um so yeah I really didn't love this one um this is about Hallie and Scarlett who are best friends um and Scarlett which one Scarlett um gets pregnant and the guy who gets her pregnant dies tragically and um, that is our one storyline our second storyline is Hallie dealing with um, pressures from her family like her and her mom have always been close and that's sort of breaking down she's also starting to see like the bad boy um, and she has to deal with like parental like over observe I don't even know what I'm saying like her parents say it's not okay and they're watching her to see what she does and they say she needs to stay away from him all that good teen drama stuff and um, this was fine seriously three stars is a fine rating for me um, but I, I'm pretty sure it was published in 1998 and I know everyone's gonna be like that's not old I was born in 1998 so to me that is an older contemporary and I just feel like there were a lot more there's a lot more that could be done with it in today's like if it was rewritten today if this story was reproposed today I feel like it could have been better I, I don't know Next is another reread that I'm kind of sad to be giving three stars and that is Fade Out by Rachel Kane. So this is the seventh book in the Vampire Morganville Vampire series. I don't know how I forgot that, which is my favourite series of all time. Um, and book number seven was just a slight letdown for me. Um, it just felt like a filler book, so I can't tell you too much about the book, obviously, because it is number seven. Um, and I've explained it countless times in my videos, so sorry if you're hearing this for like at least the seventh time. But this is about Claire Danvers, who is really, really smart. So at 16, she gets into a college, but her parents don't want to send her to some like big, big college. So they send, us to, send her to Texas, um, to this tiny town called Morganville, which it then becomes apparent that Morganville is run by vampires. Um, so this book is just dealing with a bit of a come down after the previous book because there was a really big event and this is just dealing with small issues after that big event and I know that book eight which is Kiss of Death I know that that gets a little bit more intense and I just felt like I couldn't really give this a higher rating when nothing really happens but I do really love the character still so it's still three stars and um, my next three star book was The Loneliness of Distant Beings by Kate Ling I gave this a go again in the reading rush because it is a genre I don't really read it is a sci-fi um but when reading it, I, I did enjoy it. I did like the stories. I did like the storyline. Um, but it wasn't. It didn't really feel like sci-fi to me. It was just a dystopian society that happened to be on a spaceship. And um, there were some mentions to like planets and and spaceships and things. Um, but in reality, it was just a dystopian, and it was seem. It seemed to be quite repetitive of some dystopian tropes so there was a breeding and marriage program so when kids finish school they are paired with their life partner and that is they have no say like that is just how their life is run they get paired on dna so there must be a reason like a genetic reason why they've been paired all that good stuff um so i did enjoy it three stars 
but it wasn't what one what I expected because I really wanted to branch out and try and read something different. Um, if anything, it was a good thing that it ended up being a romance, but it, it was fully a romance with the brief mention of spaceship. The next three star book is another one I'm really sad about and that is The Diviners by Lover Bray which was our Sisters Approximately book club pick for July. Um, so me and Brittany both read this, we have already done a live show discussing our opinions so I can link that in the description if you guys want to go check it out. Um, but I did not love this book, I gave it three stars, it was fine, originally I wanted to give it four, then I thought three and a half was more reasonable and then I settled on three on the day of our live show. So this is about Evie O'Neill, who is a bit of a wild girl, a bit of a party girl in the 1920s and she lives in Ohio and she's sent to New York by her parents to live with her uncle um, to sort of like calm her down so she gets sent to where she knows there are parties and speakeasies because it is during the time of Prohibition. Um, and while she's there, there seems to be a serial killer at loose and they have to try and find out what's going on and Evie and her uncle are brought into this investigation. Um, it is really good, but we found out while reviewing it that my favourite parts of this book didn't actually exist in this book. So <laughs> it sounds really weird, but my favourite things to research while we were reading it, there would be a mention of a word um, like Wendigo, which is a, a folklore tale of human cannibals that turn into like a spiritual being um but that's beside the point wendigo were mentioned in half a sentence i maybe then spent an hour getting things ready for the live show and looking into wendigo um another thing there is a creepy old haunted house with trap doors and it reminded me of hh H. holmes murder castle if you don't know anything about that then please check out the live show it's so interesting um, but the fact that trapdoors went to a basement reminded me of H.H. H. Holmes's murder castle um, and I liked researching that but that didn't actually exist in this book it was never mentioned but I enjoyed researching it a lot more people did really enjoy this book I know Victoria gave it five stars um, I've heard other people saying they did really enjoy it but to me it wasn't perfect and three stars for enjoyment but it, it wasn't great and if anyone actually wants this copy, it's a bit beat up and I've all I've done is highlighted certain parts I liked and wanted to talk about. And um, so if anyone wants a part annotated copy, then let me know because it would feel like you actually joined in on the Sisters Approximately group, which would be kind of sweet. So my first three and a half star book was actually another Sarah Desson and that is Along for the Ride. So it's another one, it's kind of forgettable. I just had to check on Goodreads what it was actually about and what the main character's name was. So this is about Auden who um, lives with her mom and she's just finishing school and getting ready to go to college. Um, and she's just under a lot of pressure from her mom to like perform well academically. And she decides she just wants a bit of a break for a summer. So she goes to stay with her dad and her dad's new wife and their new baby. Um, and it's just like a break in responsibilities. And there are, she meets um, this guy who uh, is a like BMX rider. I don't even know how they're explaining it. It's like a trick bike thing don't know don't know anything about that but it's just a completely different world for her with no um schoolwork no pressures of academia so she's just going to enjoy a nice summer beach retreat that's pretty much what the story's about there are some deeper thoughts in there as well which is i think why i gave it a bit of a high rating um but again it was slightly forgettable i've just realized how much the lighting must have changed during this video I can only apologise, it's 20 to 5 in England, so this is what the weather is like. The next three and a half star book I've got is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. I read this during Becca's Bookopoly, it was my first book I read, and I did really, really enjoy it. So this is about um, the world of mermaids and sirens and pirates and royalty. So we've got Princess Lyra, who is a um, siren, well she is the princess of sirens, um, and she is cursed to join humanity by the Sea Queen when she upsets the Sea Queen. And then we've got Prince Elian, Elian, who is the heir to the most powerful kingdom in the world and captain to a deadly crew of siren hunters. So it's pretty much The Little Mermaid with some very big twists. Really did enjoy it. Um, I was saying that to me it was on par with The Cruel Prince, which I also gave 3.5 stars, being that it's a um, fantasy don't typically read fantasy and I would have to go back and reread this to fully appreciate it, which is something I want to do. So I gave it 3.5 stars and I'm going to hold on to this copy. The final 3.5 star book I read was Aftercare Instructions by Bonnie Pipkin, which I have also unhauled so I can't show it. It will just be a photo here. Um, this is about 
a girl whose name has completely escaped me and I need to do some research. Yeah, I completely forgot. So this is about Genesis, who um, is made pregnant, gotten pregnant. Why have I forgotten the verb? She is pregnant by her high school boyfriend and he takes her to um, Planned Parenthood. I forgot what it was called then. He takes her to Planned Parenthood and she has the abortion. She leaves and he isn't in the waiting room. He has completely ditched her. Um, and it is all about, the whole book is based on the instructions that she is given by Planned Parenthood to recover. And I guess in terms of those, it is like the physical recovery of the abortion. Um, but she's sort of talking them through like mentally and the impact it's had on her. I did really enjoy this book. It was such an easy read. Some of it was told as like play scenes. So it read really quickly. I did enjoy it. It just wasn't as profound of an impact as I wanted on me and I've had this book for a very long time so I was like oh I'm finally picking it up it's going to be amazing and it wasn't quite amazing but I did really enjoy it. The next book I have is Far From The Tree by Robin Benway and um, I don't have this because I have already gifted it to someone who doesn't know they've had it gifted yet they will find out when it arrives in the post. I did really enjoy this book but I just felt like the person who wanted it is going to appreciate it more than I will appreciate it rereading it if that makes sense. So this is about three um, kids who are fostered. We have Grace, we have Maya and we have, I want to say Joaquin. So these three kids were put up for adoption by their mom um, way back when they were all fostered as children, as like little toddlers or babies um, and they weren't aware of each other's existence. So they get a little bit older and they seek each other out and they're also dealing with things in their own life. So Grace is our sort of main main character and she has just had a baby and she has put that baby up for adoption so doing that has meant she wants to seek out her adopt like her actual biological brothers and sisters um and just try and understand her mom's headspace a bit more when she gave those that she, when she gave them up for adoption i really can't speak now this is such a long video um so yeah it's just all about trying to understand what the mom did by putting them up for adoption i did really enjoy this but it just wasn't the best thing I'd ever read. Like, obviously I gave it four stars, I really enjoyed it and I just think the person who I won't name because they don't know they're getting it will enjoy it more reading it the first time than I would if I would have kept it and maybe reread it in the future. The next four star book I've got is Frankly In Love by David Yoon. This was gifted to me when I won a giveaway from Connor at Connor's Library Corner. So this, I can't even remember it, this was a Becker's Bacopoli book as well. This was Frank and Joy. So um frank they is korean um he's a korean american but uh his family are f for no better words extremely racist so they tell him that he can only date korean girls um and he doesn't want to so he meets a girl called brit uh, who is smart beautiful and white so he knows that he cannot take brit back to his parents she won't be accepted um, Frank actually has an older sister who has fallen in love with a black man and she has been completely like pushed away from the family. I can't think of the word for the life of me. Um, but then Frank has a friend Joy who is Korean and she has fallen for a guy whose name is not on the back and I cannot remember it for the life of me. So Joy also has a non-Korean partner. Um, so Frank and Joy decide to fake date uh, to keep their parents happy and to enable them to go out on dates with their non-Korean partners. It was really good, uh, four stars. It was slightly predictable. I think that's why I had to drop it down a star, but I did really enjoy it and I would recommend it as like an easy to read contemporary. Next up, the 4.5 star reads. The first one being Spirit Bound by Rochelle Mead, which is the fifth book in the Vampire Academy series. I cannot remember for the life of me why I didn't give this five stars. So give me a second. Right, okay, I checked Goodreads and it was actually for a pretty understandable reason. So. This book would have been five stars, but there were several impossible tasks that they had that the characters had to complete, um, and they were extremely impossible. But everything was a bit too convenient and happened too easily. I understand that it is a YA, which I haven't said. It's a YA, so of course it happened conveniently. But it was just a bit irritating, especially when we look back. So this is the fifth book. In books one to four, there were some impossible tasks and maybe they'd achieve one of these tasks in the book. This just felt like back to back things they shouldn't be able to achieve, which they did. So 
Again, this is probably going to be like the 10th time people have heard this, but this is about a species of vampire called the Maroi, who have protectors called Dampiers, um, who go to va the Vampire Academy, St. Vladimir's, um, and learn to be good protectors. Because there is also an evil vampire species called the Strigoi, which the Dampiers have to protect the Maroi from. Book number five, so I was so happy to finally get around to this, and it just disappointed me slightly in those aspects, but it would have been five stars without that. And the last 4.5 star book is Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. This I absolutely love. This was a gift from Sarah at Septimus Snape, so thank you very much. Um, this is about Pablo, who is a college dropout and doesn't have much going for him at all. He's working in a deli in Brooklyn. Um, and one day, Liana Smart, that's her name, yep, yeah, who is a pop star, comes into the deli and they become friends before he realises who she is. And this is about him getting sucked up into Liana's world of just insane celebrity status um, and how they both cope with that and how it turns out and will they have a relationship, will they not have a relationship? This was really good, it would have been five stars, but I hated Pablo's character. Some of the decisions he made, some of the things he said, I wanted to slap him. Which I understand that people do like reading books sometimes with unlikable main characters, but um, just generally not enjoying his personality through like at least a third of this book meant I couldn't give it five stars. It bothered me too much. But apart from that, it was amazing and I will be hanging on to it. So the five star reads. The first one I'm going to tell you about is The Killables by Gemma Malley. So this is the first book in the Killable series. I'm not sure if it has a different name. And I only reread this because I wanted to reread The Disappearances. Well, I wanted to read The Disappearances, which is book two. And I've read this now three times and two of those have been to reread it so I can read the second book. So I'm reading the second book in August, no matter what. I can. It's over there, it's looking at me, it will be read. This is a dystopian world where um, people are labelled depending on how good they are. So everyone in, in this society has had the new, ba new baptism where the amygdala in their brain is removed, which is the area of the brain that is responsible for emotion and aggression and survival instincts and all that good stuff. Um, so they've had the new baptism, their amygdala has been removed and um, I keep going to call it the Amy Gadala because when I study psychology that's what my teacher told me it was called, it was a bad time. So amygdala. Um, and yeah, so they, they've had that and everyone is labelled between an A, A to D and the label that they don't know what it means is K. Uh, it's called the killable so I'm going to tell you now without it being a spoiler that K means killable. And this is all about... Um, do you know what? It doesn't actually tell you on the back anything about the characters we follow, so I'm not going to spoil it for you either. Um, but yeah, in this society, evil has been eradicated, everyone is controlled, and they are ranked on how good they are. And it's a really, really good book. Next, I have another reread, which is The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor, which again, I read for exactly the same reason, where I want to read the sequel, Do Not Disturb, and I couldn't remember what happened in this book. This is about Deanna Madden, um, who has serial killer instincts. She believes as soon as she leaves her apartment 6E, she is going to kill somebody. So she exists in solidarity in this apartment and she makes her, her income on being a cam girl. And in the first, maybe third of this book, the cam girl side is discussed in a lot of detail. So if you'd be a little bit, not squeamish, if you don't want to hear that, don't read it because there's some graph, there's some stuff I would not read out on my YouTube. <laughs> like it is, it's intense. But I did really enjoy it. I found it so interesting. It is a cam girl mixed with a thriller um, because a little girl goes missing and Deanna feels like she is partly responsible. Um, so good. I can't wait to read the next book and I have it on my tentative August TBR but I definitely want to get to it before the end of the year because I'm not reading this again to know if I want to read that one. Finally, another reread, which really didn't have to happen, but I couldn't force myself not to, is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. So my copy of Midnight Sun has actually been dispatched today as I'm filming this. It is released tomorrow, so I'm hoping it arrives tomorrow. And I just wanted to reread Twilight before Midnight Sun arrived. Um, I have no shame. I don't know how many times I've read this. It's a five out of five every single time. It will never change. Loved it. I don't think I need to tell you what Twilight's about. I don't really want to talk about it too long because this video is far too long already um but this is like my favorite book of all time and finally a five star book the last five star book i read was the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires by grady hendrix so this was a gift from rebecca at rebecca reads and this is about patricia campbell who is a southern housewife and her life is boring all she does is pack the kids lunches um her mother-in-law needs constant care 
and she's now joined a really crappy book club. So she decides to make her own book club where they're gonna read about serial killers. So one of the books they read is How to Scout Her. I don't know if that's gonna pick up on the camera. Um, so they like to read books about true crime now as well as like more literary works. And a guy moves into the neighborhood called James Harris who they do not trust, he's very sketchy, and Patricia wants to prove that he's not the guy everyone thinks he is. Um, such a good time. This book is so like nicely written. It was so easy to read. I just had an amazing time reading it, and I'm now seeking out all of Grady Hendrix's work because this was such a good time. Right, so I've been talking on my camera for 30 minutes now, so this is gonna get cropped down, and I'm kind of scared. Um, but yeah, I'm now gonna try and hold these books up for a thumbnail. But thank you very much for watching this video. Please do leave me a comment down below if you've read any of these books and have opinions. If you want to read any of these and you have questions, please just interact with me down in the comments. It's my favourite part of posting videos, so please do talk to me. So on that note, again, thank you very much for watching uh, this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.